This is the eHealth Radio Network, your source for health advice on demand. And now your host, Eric Michaels. Thanks for joining us once again here on the eHealth Radio Network. This is your host, Eric Michaels. eHealth Radio gives you the most current health information, news, and advice featuring some of the leading innovators in healthcare and wellness who are changing healthcare as we know it. For more eHealth Radio reports, we invite you to visit our main radio channel site at eHealth Radio Network. Today we're speaking with, once again, Chrissy Regan, the wellness poet and founder of Mindful Moms Queensland. Chrissy is an author, speaker, and wellness coach based in Townsville, Queensland, Australia. And Chrissy, welcome back to eHealth Radio. Hi, Eric. How are you? Thank you for having me. Yeah, doing just fine and great to have you back with us. Looking forward to hearing from you as well. Now, to kick things off, you know, we've heard of the self-sacrificing person, but what is a self-sacrificing person? What is that exactly? Well, for me, a self-sacrificing person is generally someone that will put other people's needs, wants, and values before their own. In many instances, they may not even be aware they're doing it, but over a long period of time, it can be detrimental to a person's physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health because they compromise their own values and needs for the sake of others. Self-sacrificing people may think they're being helpful, generous, and so on, but really, they often lack a sense of self-worth, feeling as though they, as though they are not as worthy as, as worthy as others, or that they give and give and give at the expense of themselves to gain approval, recognition, or respect from others. You know, self-sacrifice really removes you from the equation, and in doing so, it's destructive to fulfilling relationships. And Eric, so many of us are taught that self-sacrifice equals being a good person. That is so true, and I actually know quite a few folks that fall into that category. This is certainly some great information and a good focus as well. Now, why is that a self-sacrificing person will generally compromise their well-being for others? Well, it's a good question because often people with these traits or behaviors will feel that they need to look after everyone else or attend to the needs of others at the expense of their own. You know, they may not even fully understand their own needs or practice different forms of self-care. It's not wrong per se to be self-sacrificing, but it's important to recognize that in sacrificing yourself consistently to benefit others, you will affect your well-being over time. You know, recently a client and I were discussing how always being so accommodating to other people's needs and requests was having a detrimental impact on his state of mind and his healthy habits. So we discussed some ways that he could be mindful of that and consider the cost to himself of continually being so accommodating to everyone else. And as a former person who was very self-sacrificing, I also recommend the role that this played in my own health and well-being over a long period of time. Now, how does a person who has compromised their health through giving to others start to turn things around? Where do they get started? Well, it starts really with an honest conversation with yourself. You know, for instance, acknowledging that you may have suffered as a result of being self-sacrificing and recognizing that people may be taking advantage of your generous spirit and your self-sacrificing behavior. If you recognize yourself in this situation, it's really important to develop some tools such as saying no, asking for space, managing others' expectations of you, developing a self-care plan, You know, even taking some time out and considering what has been the cost to your health and what you would like to do differently. And then you can step back into your environment with more objective view of your self-sacrifice. Chrissy, really appreciate the input and insight so far today. We're speaking with Chrissy Regan, the wellness poet and founder of Mindful Moms Queensland. She's joined us once again here on eHealth Radio's Health News Channel a part of the eHealth Radio Network. Now, Chrissy, what three steps would you encourage someone to take to feel empowered for their own health and well-being? Well, this is really important because first and foremost, I feel each person needs to decide that good health is not a luxury. It's a necessity and we all deserve good health. You know, so make health a non-negotiable part of your life in all areas, at home and at work. You know, make your intentions clear to your family, friends, and colleagues. You must verbalize your intention and then take actions. And if you journal your thoughts and your feelings and you start to recognize some patterns in your behavior that may be keeping you stuck in an unhealthy cycle of sacrifice, one insight I learned from Brene Brown's book, The Gifts of Imperfection, is that compassionate people have boundaries. 
So rather than be self-sacrificing or try and fix everyone, I decided to create some boundaries in my life and I started saying no, recognizing that I could still be helpful and compassionate but practice healthy boundaries to those I felt may take advantage of me or equally those that just want to dump endless amounts of drama on you. Good stuff there. Good input once again. Now, how is it that very giving people who are self-sacrificing often feel like the victim? Yes, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because over time, um, sacrificing yourself does become a habit. And whilst you may derive pleasure from helping people, you may also resent the fact that no one is there to help you or that people are not looking after you in the same ways that you are looking after them. And then they don't see your value. Then we start to feel like victims and we can feel resentful. What I tell people in this instance is that unless you are giving to yourself first, you can't expect others to give to you. You know, and that sounds quite harsh, particularly to people who love helping others, but it's true. You must first help yourself or put your own mask on and then you can be more useful to others. You know, that's a basic principle of self-care, but one that's very overlooked by self-sacrificing personalities. Like I said, it's not wrong to be helpful, kind and generous and very giving, but we must not allow those values to become unhealthy because we do not apply them to ourselves in the same way that we apply them to others. And that's when we start to see our health and our well-being become compromised because we're constantly neglecting our own needs, Eric. Chrissy, really appreciate your visits each and every time and for joining us once again here on eHealth Radio. Some really good focus here on self-sacrificing people and uh, how to make sure it doesn't get out of control, if you know what I mean, in regards to our health and well-being. In conclusion, any closing thoughts, a final word or a tip or advice along the lines of our conversation today? Well, as a person who was formerly very self-sacrificing, I recognized the long-term impact that had played on my general health and wellness and how I had negated my needs and didn't have a good self-care routine. So for me... Really, it's about if you notice your health and well-being suffering because you're a very giving person, you know, you could ask yourself one simple question. What would happen if I was not here? And, you know, once you ask that question, it opens the door for you to kind of look at your your habits in a much more um, objective way and to find some some methods and some space in order to decide what it is that you actually need for your own health and well-being, Eric. That is one impactful question to ask oneself under these circumstances. Really appreciate the information today, and I'm sure listeners want to know, once again, how they could connect with you or to get more information on The Wellness Poet. Where's the best place to get details online? Thank you. So my web, my website is thewellnesspoet.com that um, holds all the information about my work and programs and workshops and retreats that I offer as well as information about my online wellness school. And again, that is thewellnesspoet.com. All links will be left within the show notes of this broadcast to be of help. Again, Chrissy, all the best and look forward to our next conversation right here on eHealth Radio. Thank you so much, Eric. Take care. Have a great day. And you as well. We've been speaking with Chrissy Regan, the wellness poet and founder of Mindful Moms Queensland. And for all the details and for contact, visit thewellnesspoet.com. And again, this has been your host, Eric Michaels. And we do thank you for your continued support of the eHealth Radio Network. Join us again soon for another episode that will help further expand your knowledge on those things that are important to your health and wellness. For more eHealth Radio reports, we invite you to visit our main radio channel site at eHealthRadioNetwork.com. And as always, we do thank you for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to the eHealth Radio Network. For more information or to subscribe to this podcast, visit eHealthRadioNetwork.com. 